Hey everyone, it's Ollie Lindley here from One Number. We're going to take a look at Tableau Pulse today. Tableau Pulse is a new ish product released by Tableau. Uh, it's aimed at uh, sort of putting into the hands of people in the organization a couple of key metrics that you want to follow over time. So we're going to dive into a look at like what it is, how do you set up these metrics, how do you follow them, how do you share them, things like that. You can access Tableau Pulse through Tableau Cloud. So very practically, when Tableau Pulse was released, uh, it's not like switched on by default. Like we had to get our system administrator to give us access to Tableau Pulse. So just turn it on so that we could all, all access it. So in Tableau Cloud, you can see we've got a little Tableau Pulse icon down at the bottom. So you might not have that by default. And if you don't, just reach out to whoever's administrating your page. So I just wanted to show you super quickly, we're just gonna be using Sample Superstore today as always, so you know what we're dealing with and where these measures come from and, and things like that. Okay, so we're gonna click into Tableau Pulse, but I've already preloaded our little Tableau Pulse in here. This is the home page, and uh, I guess a couple of things to make a note of, when you've sort of fired up Tableau Pulse and set up some metrics, you're gonna land on this home page and that, they, this is gonna uh, be all the metrics that you're following, okay? So you don't automatically see every single metric that's been set up for you. You can browse metrics, which is gonna be the list of every metric you've defined, and then you can follow them by clicking the little three, three um, dots and following it. Uh, we'll take a look at these in a little bit more detail, but I think something that's pretty cool is like a little headline up at the top of your Tableau Pulse site, so for instance, we can see, cool, our running sum of sales increased slightly and our monthly sum of profit is up by 20%. Just means you don't have to you know, analyze each of these yourself to take a look at that, which is pretty cool. Um, let's create a new metric definition. We'll look at how they're made and then we'll take a look at how to work it out in Tableau. Okay, so you might by default, let's unfollow these, right? This is probably what your page is gonna look like. Uh, we could browse metrics, these have to be pre-built, but we'll start by creating a new metric definition. And let's connect to our little Tableau Pulse um, sample superstore. Right, now a couple of things from the top down. Name is gonna be the name of our metric. So why don't we call this um, profit ratio? Let's track our profit ratio over time. We can put in a little description, uh, <laughs> profit, Maybe this will make more sense to define it after we've done the whole thing, but I think it's gonna be profit ratio over time by region, maybe? Yeah, let's do that, by region. Okay, you have a couple of these like predefined sections. Now, Tableau Pulse, when creating a new metric, is always gonna ask you for one measure, one time field, and a filter. Those three things, measure, time field, filter. So as you walk through it, this is where we're gonna choose those things. So let's choose profit ratio. Okay, it's gonna be aggregated uh, by default. Profit ratio is, is already aggregated. But if we chose profit, we could choose that, you know, sum, average, median, max, et cetera, et cetera. And we can choose a spark line to be a running total or non-cumulative. Running total means um, every point is going to be the sum of all the points that came before it, of all the profit values that came before it. Non-cumulative means, uh, you know, if we're looking at this month over month, every point is going to be the profit for that month, right? That's non-cumulative. So in our case, let's go back to our little profit ratio and take it there. If you add a definition filter, this is where we can add something like region, right? Like, oh, we want to see... Uh, just our profit ratio for the central region. So we can apply that. So we would have to go back here and say profit ratio central region. Okay, so that's your definition filters. Now I don't really wanna add a definition filter for this just yet because I wanna show you how this plays out in our sort of home screen. But just an FYI, you can pull that right down to a single member of a dimension if you want. So step two, after we've got our measure, is the time dimension, and here I'll choose order date uh, because we only have two, right? Your advanced time settings, don't <laughs> they're not like uh, super in-depth. Basically, we can just set up a little date offset, and all a date offset is is 
uh, it's kind of saying like you can you can shift that latest date back by X number of days. So for instance, um, you would do this if your data is updating every three days or it's always three days behind where we are currently, something like that. We could put a date offset to three days ago. But I don't think we're gonna do any advanced time settings. Now, do you remember when we looked at the original metric definition, we'd had like, oh, up 30% versus the prior period and 40% versus the prior year. That's where we can change these over here. <clears throat> you can click and drag and swap these around, but you can't really change what this uh, compares to. So you can't change it to like, um, you know, two years ago or whatever it would be. Your prior period is always gonna be whatever, uh, so you can see by default, we've got month to date. So our prior period is gonna be the previous month to date. If we were to change this to year to date, prior period would automatically change to previous year to date. So that's quite useful. You can't really change that too much. This create advanced definition is not referring to this prior period or prior year. This is actually setting up a whole advanced definition for the metric. Okay, and we'll take a look at that now. Lastly, we've got this little adjustable metrics filter, and here's where I'll choose region so that my end users can see the profit ratio by region, which is gonna be pretty cool. And lastly, our number format is gonna be a percentage. So it doesn't say 15, uh, 0 0.15, it says 15.3, okay. If we flick over to insights, we've got the option to let Tableau Pulse know that when the metric is going up, it is favorable. And when it is, uh, if it's going up, it's neutral and unfavorable would be red. Now, this ideally should turn into green. So favorable means if it's going up, it's gonna turn into green. And if it's going down, it's gonna go red. Um, but maybe it's because it hasn't exceeded our trend line or something that it's not changing colors. We'll see. Here we've got a bunch of insight types, and these are basically just insights that we can turn off. So you can take a look at each of these in a little bit more detail, but basically it just, it just gives Tableau Pulse the liberty to analyze our data and let us know like, hey, there's one uh, factor that's really influencing the increase of our metric, right? Or uh, I'm gonna highlight the fact that we have uh, you know, a couple of members of a dimension that's really dragging this metric down, things like that. You can turn any of those off and dive into them in some more detail, but that's basically it. You're just adjusting whether you want Tableau Pulse to alert you to those things or not. Uh, you can't actually incorporate them into the view right now. It's just about do you want Pulse to generate definitions with that in the future if possible, right? <laughs> that kind of thing. So let's go back to the definition. I think we're done. Let's save this definition. And cool. This is what it looks like when we're done. So a couple of things. We can follow this. Uh, what this means is that now we've set it up, we're gonna get alerts, we're gonna get updates, and this metric is gonna be on our Tableau Pulse like homepage, which is gonna be pretty cool. We can add followers, so other people in our organization, uh, we can add. And lastly, we can edit our definition if we want, right? If we've done something bad, we can go and fix it. Now, let's take a look at what this is actually talking about. So our little, uh, that doesn't look so nice here. Our little um, prior period and prior year uh, is pretty interesting in here. Um, we can see that this is down 20% and 22%, but you know, we've only had nine days is my, Hmm, I'm trying to think now. I see that the latest date was the 6th of July, so maybe when we did our advanced date offset, oh, we didn't save it. Okay, so you actually have to click enter, interesting. So let's save it and we'll go back. Okay, that's a little bit better. Um, I get an initial insight over here, which is cool and Let's take a look at these filters quickly. So I can change from my period from month to date to something like quarter to date, which I guess technically is gonna be the same thing. So let's go year to date and apply. Okay, very interesting. So we can see we're up from the prior period 
which is very interesting, very cool. But we don't have that uh, green and red color change that I was hoping Tableau Pulse would generate for us. So I'm not sure if it's just missing that uh, you know identifier in here, um, but hey, that would have been pretty cool. Then the second thing we can adjust is the region, right? This is the filter that we've added in. So here I can just check the two regions that I want and apply that and that's gonna come through here. Now, it doesn't actually make it super clear what those regions are when you're looking at it. Like it doesn't say, you know, it doesn't change the name and you can't actually input like a dynamic field into the name. So it can't say profit ratio for region, right? It doesn't, it doesn't do that. Um, so the closest we can get is down here at the bottom in our insights. But before we take a look at insights just yet, let's pop them all back in and we'll stick with year to date. Okay. Now insights down at the bottom is a pretty interesting section. Um, it by default is going to give you a breakdown of the dimensions that you've put in, in your filters. So these uh, members of this dimension all get pulled in from the filters. They're not from the initial build, right? Does that make sense? So it's not, remember when we are defining uh, our metrics, it's a, me it's a measure, a time field, and a filter. So that's what's being pulled through here. Now, top contributors was one of the insights that you can turn on and off. And so you can see Tableau's kind of generating that as we go. But we can also discover some top insights. So I can ask some questions of our data, um, or we can take a look at these like prompted questions, right? What is the trend? We can see like, well, I guess the average is, the trend is slightly down but it's pretty volatile, which is, which is cool. Um, and oh no, we've explored all available questions for this metric. So that's, that's cool. Lastly, if we take a look at breakdown, uh, we'll break, break it down for each uh, member of the dimension that we filtered on. And it's pretty much just our, um, our insights page so far. Okay, so that's setting up a basic uh, let's save this. That's setting up a basic metric. And then we are going to go back to our homepage. And now we can see we're following our profit ratio. Right, so we're going to take a look at the advanced metric definition now. Uh, but just a heads up, if you're keen to learn more about Tableau, why not join us for a class? Uh, we've got some super cool classes, anything from learning more about calculations, sex parameters, LEDs, all the way through to like a complete learning path with our Tableau training passport that's currently 50% off. You get access to all our classes. We'd love to see you there. All right, let's set a new metric definition. And hmm, what should we look at? I think I've done like profit over time. Maybe we'll look at like a customer, customer count. And we're just gonna come straight, so I'm gonna ignore all this stuff, and I'm just gonna go straight down to create an advanced definition. Now, when you're creating an advanced definition, it looks advanced, but as far as I've seen, it's not that advanced. So basically what this means is you can set this up with what looks like Tableau, and, and yet you only have measure time and filters you're still dealing with those initial blocks. So for instance, if we're taking a look at our customer name, can we just do this? Mm hmm. So I can't even create accounts of customers like this. Let's try this. Accounts of customers, say give me account distinct of customer name. Let's hit okay. And let's pop that onto measure. Okay, nice. Then our time dimension is gonna be order date. And it doesn't actually matter what you choose. Like you can just throw a year of order date on. It's not gonna mess up your filters in any way. In fact, Tableau Pulse is always gonna define this as month to date by default. So maybe we just choose this continuous month of order date and you know watch the count of customers over time. Now, this filters tab to me seems a little bit undercooked at the moment. 
And what I mean is if we wanted to say, cool, give us a count distinct of our customers for the top 10 cities in buy some of sales in our, you know, in our uh, data set. If I drop city onto filters, I go to top, we're going to go by field, top 10 by sum of sales. Okay, so this should give me only the, uh, the customers from my top 10 cities by sum of sales. Should be fine, like that's not too complicated. I can see that this works and it's valid. Let's hit apply. Tableau says, are you sure you wanna apply these selections? We say apply. Okay, very nice. Except like not that nice because this says we have two customers. So, hmm. Something's not quite up with, or something's not quite right with these top filters or any advanced filters in Tableau Pulse just yet. And I wanted to draw your attention to that because you can see at this point, right, we have 80. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me show you this. Month to date. Let's save this. Ah, adjustable metric filters. Let's do this for region by the moment and save this. Okay. Now let's see if we adjust this to year to date, we should be up to about like 80 customers by the end of it, but we're not. So I'm not quite sure where these are coming from and we can see what this looks like. 56, 52, hmm. down to 13 in July. Yeah, it's pretty interesting to me. Let's edit this once more. Let's see if we can get it right. Replace this. Um, and I want to actually investigate this myself. August, July 45. So our, our Tableau Pulse metric was saying 15. Maybe I'm missing something uh, that you can see, but I've yet to get these top filters or you know any kind of uh, specialized filter to work. In, in Tableau Pulse. Um, in my mind, it's been easier to just kind of leave it as the default, apply this, and then add your adjustable metric filter as you go. So um, I'd love to see that, you know, maybe, like I said, maybe I'm missing something, but I'd love to see that uh, improved a little bit. Okay, last thing on Tableau Pulse is that these are designed to be followed and to give you updates. And you can incorporate these into your Salesforce dashboards as well. So I think using a Salesforce Lightning Connector should allow you to pull these um, tiles, you know, from Tableau Pulse into your Salesforce dashboard and follow those there. But because I don't have access to a Salesforce dashboard, I can't show you that. So you'll have to uh, investigate that a little bit more. Okay, I think this is a super interesting product and I'm really excited to see where this goes over time. And I think certainly to give you a bird's eye view of some key metrics and what you're tracking, this is a great product. I think there is room to improve, which is wonderful. I mean, there's always room to improve, isn't there? Um, and that's, to me, that's super exciting. So I hope this is helpful. If you have any other questions, you're welcome to pop them in the chat below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But otherwise, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.